Good day everyone. We are the group 8 reporters and our topic is all about music as text from 1980s to 1999. So next is, next slide is the group members. We have um, Michael Laurel, me, Juna Marie Serben, and Brian Himoya. So next is 1980s. The 1980s saw the emergence of electronic dance, music, and new wave, also known as modern rock. A disco fell out of fashion in the decade's early years, genres such as post-disco, italo disco, euro disco, and dance pop became more popular. Rock music continued to enjoy a wide audience. The 1980s are commonly remembered for a great increase in the use of digital recording, as associated with the usage of synthesizers, with synth pop music and other electronic genres featuring non-traditional instruments increasing in popularity. Also during this decade, several major electronic genres were developed, including electro, techno, house, freestyle, and new dance rising in prominence during the 1980s and beyond. Throughout the decade, metropolitan cities, rap was especially successful in the latter part of the decade with the advent of the golden age hip-hop. The urban genres, particularly rap and hip-hop, would continue the rise in popularity through the 1990s and 2000s. A 2010 survey conducted by the digital broadcaster Music Choice, which pulled over 11,000 European participants, revealed that the 1980s was the most favored tune decade of the last 40 years. Notable artists including Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Madonna, George Michael, Prince, and The Police. Pop the 1980s saw the reinvention of Michael Jackson, the worldwide superstardom of Prince, Madonna, and Whitney Houston, who were all among the most successful musicians during this time. The year 1980s were the time where individuals had influences from pop music superstars like Michael Jackson, Cindy Looper, and Madonna. This was mixed with the rise of electronic music that was fun to dance to along with hip-hop, rap, synth-pop, new wave, and not to mention hair metal that all, all became influential. Rock. In the 1980s, rock music was more precisely defined and split up into multiple subgenres. The first subgenre of the rock is the alternative rock. By 1984, a majority of groups signed to independent record labels were mining from a variety of rock and particularly 1960s rock influences. This represented a sharp break from the futuristic, hyper-rational post-punk years. These genres are unified by their collective, collective depth to the style and or ethos of punk which laid the groundwork for alternative music in the 1970s. Though the genre is considered to be rock, some of its subgenres are influenced by the folk music, reggae, electronic music, and jazz, and among others. The popular and commercial success of Nirvana's 1991 album Nevermind took alternative rock into the mainstream, establishing its commercial and cultural viability. As a result, alternative rock became the most popular form of rock music of the decade and many alternative rock bands garnered commercial and critical success. The second subgenre of rock is the contemporary R&B. Contemporary R&B originated in the 1980s when the musicians started adding disco-like beats, high-tech production, and elements of hip-hop, soul, and funk to the rhythm and blues, making it more danceable and modern. As disco faded into ash, the 1980s saw the rise of a new soul R&B sound dominated by synthesizers and drum machines. Rick James, Bobby Brown, and Whitney Houston capitalized on the new sound, as Prince, Steve Wonder, and Tina Turner adapted Hustle. 
We can divide the history of R&B into two significant eras, the classical rhythm and blues that reigned from the 1940s to the late 1970s, and the contemporary style that started to develop in the 1980s and continues to this day. Hip-hop, encompassing graffiti art, break dancing, rap music, and fashion. Hip-hop became the dominant cultural movement of the African-American communities in the 1980s. The hip-hop musical genre had a strong influence on pop music in the late 1980s, which continue to the present day. And here are some of most iconic hip-hop songs in the year 1980s and 1990s. The first one is Rebel Without a Pause by Public Enemy. Rebel Without a Pause was the first song created for the first single release from the Public Enemy's masterpiece, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. This song was released in 1987, way before the album came out in the summer of 1988. And it was sort of the bridge between the still somewhat unpolished sounds of Yo Bomb Rush, the show to the Bomb Squad, produced perfection on it takes at a nation. The next one is The Shook One by Mob Deep. Classic Mob Deep rhymes over a signature sinister Havoc beat. This song is not just Mob Deep's best, but one of the very best in the history of hip hop. The centerpiece of all around epic album, The Infamous, which was a big part of the renaissance of the East Coast hip hop. Electronic music. In the 1980s, dance music records made using only electronic instruments became increasingly popular largely influenced by the electronic music of Kraftwerk and 1970 disco music. Such music was originally born of and popularized via regional nightclub scenes in the 1980s and became the predominant type of music played in the discotheques as well as the rave scene. And here are some greatest scene pop songs in the year 1980 and 1990. The first one is the Enola Gay by OMD. Considering how catchy and cheerful this song sounds, if you weren't listening to the lyrics, you'd probably have no idea it is. It is all about the atomic bombing of Hiroshima during the final stages of World War II. The next one is Show Me Love by Robin S. This 1993 track became one of the most well-known house anthems in the United Kingdom and the Robin's biggest hit to date. Many would say it helped to push house music more into the mainstream, especially in larger markets like the UK and the USA. Country music As the 1980s dawned, pop-influenced country music was the dominant style. Through such acts as Kenny Rogers, Ronnie Millsop, TJ Shepard, Eddie Rabbit, Crystal Gale, Anne Murray and Dolly Parton. And here are some examples of the most country music that most hit in the year of 1980s and 1990s. The first one is The Island in the Stream by Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. This endlessly upbeat love song has Rogers and Parton inviting each other to sail away with me to another world, which exactly what they did. Written by the Bee Gees, the song took Rogers and Parton to the top of both the country and the pop chart in 1983. The next one is The Independence Day by Martina McBride. Co-written and recorded by Martina McBride, it was released in May 1993, being the lead single from her album Wild Night. This song reached only number 12 on the Billboard hot country singles and track charts, but was certified platinum and received two Country Music Association Awards for Song and Video of the Year. So next is the digital technology and alternatives to adult-oriented rock. The music industry was rescued from its economic crisis by the development in the 1980s of a new technology, digital recording. Vinyl records were replaced by the compact desk or CD, 
of technological revolution that immediately had a conservative effect. By this point, the most affluent record buyers had grown up on rap. They were encouraged to replace the records, to listen to the same music and a superior sound system. The radical development of digital technology occurred elsewhere. In the new devices for sampling and manipulating sound used by dance music engineers who had already been exploring the rhythmic and sonic possibilities of electronic instruments and blurring the distinctions between live and recorded music. And so that is the end of our report and thank you for listening.